Listen to me carefully. You cannot go along with this plan. What are you doing here? Trying to put a stop to this insanity. Look, I'm sure the Senator's peddling this ideal of a world without mutation. If it were that easy, I'd be right there with him. The reality of this is, if Senator Matthews gets his way, the repercussions will be unfathomable. Tell me what's going on. For as long as I can remember, Enclave scientists have been trying to modify the FEV to attack mutated tissue in some way or another. Matthews wants Dr. Kane's strain to be as aggressive and indiscriminate as possible. And there's the problem. People like you and General Ward? Enclave personnel who haven't been exposed to radiation for extended periods of time? The FEV wouldn't touch you. But people like me? Enclave remnants who've had to scavenge the wastes for years? We've been exposed to enough radiation that the FEV would end us. And once people catch wind of the FEV, uh, I guarantee they will all band together to destroy the Enclave. They'd be fighting for their survival. We can't let this happen. I don't know what to say. I know this is a lot to take in. What I'm going to propose sounds extreme. Is extreme. But there really is no other option. General Ward firmly believes in the Senator's plan, and we don't have the authority to stop the FEV distribution system from being built. I'm afraid the only choice we have is to eliminate Senator Matthews and General Ward. Why are you telling me all of this? You're a good officer. We've worked together long enough for me to see that. I'm sure you see the importance and loyalty to your fellow soldier, rather than committing them to certain death for a select few's misguided vision. Can I ask some questions? Yeah, please do. Major? What about afterwards? Won't everyone be after us? High Command's response is definitely a concern. There's no doubt they're pushing for the FEV's worldwide deployment, too. Unfortunately, all we can do is be hopeful that they're accepting of my leadership, and that I can run enough interference to derail the plan. If not, we'll have to figure it out. I know that isn't the answer you were hoping for. What's your plan, exactly? Of course, I still believe in the Enclave's vision. The United States of America is rightfully ours. We are the country's successor. I believe that with our world-class equipment and facilities, we can take back what's ours through use of force. I have some more questions first. Don't you think you're being a little selfish here? I know how this looks. Yes. On General Ward and Senator Matthews' death, I become the interim base commander. But I promise, this isn't a power grab for the sake of it. This is just so I can put the brakes on their plan. Shouldn't we try to avoid killing anyone? Hmm, that's too risky. We get it wrong, we might end up releasing the FEV ourselves. We need to put a stop to this before it gets that far. The simple solution is just to kill her. That could work, but the truth is, I, I think her FEV work is invaluable. I just disagree with the format it's being used in. I'm hoping we could have her create a localized delivery method. Something to give our troops the edge against hostiles. That's all. All right. So, what do you say? Okay. I understand. You don't know how relieved I am to hear that. Thank you. Obviously, I don't need to tell you that you can't gun them down in cold blood. Their deaths need to look like an accident. And they need to die together. That's our best chance at keeping suspicions low. Have any suggestions? Search their offices. Eavesdrop on conversations. You might find something you can use to cause an accident. Well, this will be an interesting challenge. It's no secret General Ward and I haven't seen eye to eye for a while. I think it's best if I stay away, so his death can't be traced to me. I'll be at the Army Depot until the deed is done. By the way, if you get found out, I'm not going to be able to compromise my position and bail you out. So be careful. Good luck, Major. You're doing the right thing.
Ma'am, what is it, Major? I'm on it. Good luck, Major. You're doing the right thing. Careful around the railings. It's Carter a Bird, long way in. down. Flight control's been hounding me. Ward and the senator want to go ASAP. Yeah, 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 we're almost there. It's got some kinks to iron out. And we'll be gold. Bay 3 set up, and the flight computer's ready. Huh? What needs fixing? Hey, look, I gotta get back to it. We'll have to report with all the info in the flight control room. Hey, if you're wounded, go see Dr. Daglas over in the bed bay. Brotherhood took Washington from us. We'll take their elder from them. Pilot, it's time to go. Yes, sir. General? General Ward and Senator Matthews both dead? 
Something doesn't sit right with me. Comms have been going crazy. A vertebrate crashed at the oil rig shortly after takeoff. But I think you knew about that already. Do you really think the sacrifices will be worth it? I don't know if this will give you much comfort, but this was the only choice any of us had. First, let me take that hypersonic vaporizer off of you. I'll get it to Dr. Kane. I'm not blind to the fact that in the short term, there's going to be a lot of confusion and pain from the loss of such high-ranking officials. But we need to put that to one side for now. I've heard from Myers. He thinks he's found the solution to the oil rig's power issues. Is that a problem? I won't be allowing the FEV to be released into the atmosphere. But I do still want Dr. Kane to continue her research. I'm sure she can weaponize it in a more direct way. To make our troops' lives easier. And for that, we still need a lot more power for the labs. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm impressed. I've known him for many years. He always pulls through. Myers found mention of a beryllium agitator in both that Institute holotape as well as the dossier you acquired. From what he said, it's the key to fixing the oil rig's power output levels. Only problem? The Institute wanted to. Badly. According to our intel, the agitator is at the old mass fusion headquarters. And I expect the Institute is planning to get it ASAP. Hold on. I'll be back. What? We really don't have time for this, Major. Ma'am. We need to talk about mass fusion, Major. Metal detective delivery. At your service. Um, all right. The Enclave's about to make another enemy. Something we're all too good at doing. I know you're light on information, but time is of the essence. A vertebrate is being prepared for you at the police station. Captain Peterson has been briefed. Talk to him. And get that beryllium agitator from Mass Fusion. I'll get back to the oil rig and try to handle the fallout from General Ward and Senator Matthews' deaths. Good luck, Major. Ma'am. You need to go to Mass Fusion ASAP, Major. Does Colonel Whitehill have what it takes? She's got big shoes to fill. Excuse me. Major? Excuse me. Nothing to report, ma'am. Take you apart. I can't believe it. The general's dead. Hey, we've survived this far. We'll make it to the end. I'll try and be optimistic. It's just a, a big loss. It's gonna be okay, right? I hope so. We'll just have to trust in Colonel Whitehill's leadership for now. So, the mission. We need to airdrop onto the roof of the mass fusion building and recover a device they were creating before the war, the beryllium agitator. If we're lucky, it should be located close to the roof. If not, we'll need to do a sweep through the building. According to Chief Engineer Myers, there's a very real risk we'll encounter the Brotherhood of Steel or the Institute. I'll be accompanying you in case we face additional resistance. Who's that I'll be fighting? If we're lucky, we'll get there before either of them. Otherwise, according to the info Myers pulled from that Institute tape, the Brotherhood need the Agitator, and the Institute wants to stop that. So, we need to be ready to fight either of them. 
No way. You're staying here. Are you sure, ma'am? You might need the fire support. Yeah, I'm sure. All right, ma'am. Orders are orders. The vertebrates could go. Board it when you're ready to depart. Again? There's a real buzz around here these days. Pressure will hit 740 PSI. Increased load from the labs. Compensating. Gotta keep an eye hey, on the Major. Loads. Sounds like you got that fancy beryllium agitator for me. You're awfully chipper. I'm about to get my hands on a fun new toy. And my life's about to get a whole lot easier. I can't complain. Yep, got it right here. we we'll power down reactor one, ready for the agitator. Let's get cooking. You've got this, Myers. Won't take long. Monitors are going straight across the board. Okay. Reactor Fire her up, Sam. Ninety-five percent efficiency. Now you got it. Ooh, Some quaking in six seven. Good. Increased load Nothing. from the labs. Compensation command and. Got to keep yeah. an eye on those transient loads. Reactor online. Is that a green across the board? <sighs> it's all coming. Hey together. there. I wish the troops weren't so hard on their power armor. So many suits to fix. Reactor 1 is operating at a 97 All things considered, that went smoothly. Well done. Now everyone can focus on their work, rather than worry about power budgets. Why is that so important? It just means we can finally keep the factory running while Dr. Kane and her team keep refining their FEV formula. Before the upgrade, the reactors couldn't cope with supplying both facilities simultaneously. I'm sure the reactor will improve everyone's life. It's a great accomplishment. That it will. And we have you to thank for it. I spoke to Dr. Kane earlier, and she mentioned wanting to show me something in the labs. You should join us. Reactor temperature is at a steady 995 degrees. I've just had a look. We're making fantastic progress, aren't we? I'll have to write up a report for Dr. Kane immediately. She'll want to know about this. Hello, Major. I take it you're here for the demonstration? So, is this your life's work? <laughs> In a sense, it's actually the opposite. The FEV has seen many names and purposes over the years, and has been worked on by many different people. My colleagues and I were originally part of the team developing FEV-2, a strain that would have turned our soldiers, well, into super soldiers. The strain I've developed is very loosely based on that retrovirus. Rather than reverse the effects of FEV-2, it is lethal to the damaged DNA. A valuable tool for cleansing this world of threats, I'm sure you'd agree. Let's get started. Very well, let us begin. Let's see what you've got, Doctor. I thought it'd be prudent to show you how we got where we are. If you look down into the test chamber, you'll see the results of what I'm designating FEV-Kane-1. 
This strain of the FEV is not dissimilar to the one we recovered, simply stabilized to the best of my abilities. Ghouls and super mutants, all dead. Surely it wasn't that easy, was it? Unfortunately, it wasn't that straightforward, no. Of the four subjects in that test chamber, two were relatively healthy wastelanders, one was a ghoul, and one was a vault dweller from Vault 81. The Vault Dweller exhibited extreme cell growth within 15 minutes of exposure. Strength and aggression increased dramatically. We had to terminate them. The Wastelanders did not, at first, exhibit any reactions until they lost consciousness after half an hour. Within an hour, they appeared to begin uh, ghoulifying. While the ghoul, uh, the ghoul experienced near-instant death due to lung damage, uh, one positive result at least. I imagine the strain you were working with was designed for a very different purpose. Yes, this original strain was created with the Super Soldier plan in mind. In here, you can see the results of FEV Kane 6. I can see why you've been requesting more test subjects. Uh, quite. With this strain, we wanted to increase the potency of the virus to reduce the time needed to reach maximum effect. Unfortunately, it appears we made FEV Kane 6 far too aggressive. It provokes an intense immunoresponse in patients, leading to immediate and indiscriminate death and uh, liquefaction. Interesting. It could still be an effective weapon for our troops. Perhaps, but if it's purely chemical warfare you're interested in, there are far simpler compounds that can be used. This way, please. Here we have the results of FEV Kane 9. I was close with this strain, very close. Like in the first example, the subjects consisted of one vault dweller, two common wastelanders, and a ghoul. Within five minutes of exposure to the FEV agent, all subjects, minus the vault dweller, perished from asphyxiation as their lung cells were destroyed. The vault dweller exhibited no abnormal symptoms aside from well, mental trauma, as is to be expected. Honing in on their lungs, then. Yes, the base agent was already affecting the subject's lungs, so we opted to build on that. The results were very promising. It is most potent against land-based mammals, although it does seem to retain some effectiveness against non-mammals, aggressively attacking their organs. Unfortunately, healthy humans are not fully immune to the effects of FEV K9. Approximately two hours after exposure, an aggressive cancer begins to propagate through the patient's body. This one doesn't have long left to live. That's a shame, but it's good progress nonetheless. Yes, we were so close. We were, however, able to identify what leads to the cancer in pure patients after sufficient testing. Come with me to the upper test chamber. So, what have you got for us here? Let's call it a live fire exercise. Please, please, you don't have to do this. You shouldn't have leaked information, Corporal. A traitor with minimal radiation exposure makes for a fine control sample. I'm sure you'd agree. You got this all wrong. I didn't do anything. Please settle down. Now, on the left of the chamber, we have sedated wasteland abominations. I had hoped to include a non-feral ghoul in this demonstration, but unfortunately I have already depleted our reserves of them. I think it's time you see FEV Kane 9B in action. You can dispense it from that terminal over there. Do you want to start the test?
I'm not sure. I understand the sentiment. I'll do it. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Please, stop. The FEV has been dispensed. I don't want to die. Stop whining. Fortunately for you, your radiation levels are too minute for FEV K9B to react. This is it. The ultimate weapon against the wasteland. No need to inoculate, and no cure for those vulnerable to it. You can't argue with the results. What's our next move? Our immediate priority should be to weaponize this FEV in some form of grenade. Equipping our troops with a localized, highly lethal way to tackle irradiated hostiles will be crucial as we occupy more of the Commonwealth. This is a good start. I think so, too. Colonel Whitehill, I implore you to rethink this strategy of yours. It would be foolish to squander my FEV in rudimentary grenades. We hold the solution to the mutated hordes in our hands. Let me work with the Chief Engineer to release my FEV throughout the world. No. My word is final, Doctor. We're going forward with the development of FEV grenades, and that's that. You're making a mistake! What's going on? The depot is under attack. Who by? A Brotherhood air assault. Our troops are outnumbered. Shit. We've got to send them reinforcements. Get the vertebrates ready to transport the troops ASAP. Major, I need you to assist the troops in the defense. Do what you've got to do. Move out. Follow me, Major. <laughs> Ma'am, you have to reinforce the troops at the army depot. You have to reinforce the troops at the army depot. Ready to go to the Army Depot, ma'am? Let's move out.
nice pair.
Ma'am. Good work, Niger. But we can't rest yet. Something serious is coming. What's our next move? Our intel shows the Brotherhood has moved into an old test silo north of here, known as Site Gamma. They're preparing to launch a missile against the oil rig. It'd wipe us out in an instant. We're launching an attack on Site Gamma immediately, and you're on the operation. Captain Peterson knows about Site Gamma, so he'll head the operation. Let's teach the Brotherhood a lesson. Captain. Major, ready to begin? I'm ready. The target is Site Gamma, a missile test site. The facility is covered by two anti-air batteries, which will need to be destroyed before we can send in the main force. We will be airdropped just outside of the anti-air's range. Our primary objective will be to disable them. After we've disabled both anti-airs, the main force will arrive. We'll advance to the launch site with vertebrates providing covering fire. Once inside the launch site, we fight our way to the control room and clear it. Ready to go? Not yet. We really don't have much time, Major. Got your six, Major. First target's to the north of us. That's where the first anti-air control terminal's at. Brotherhood won't know what hit them. Job, Major. I knew I could count on you. All in a day's work for the hero of the Commonwealth. We can use this to give the Brotherhood a taste of their own medicine. We'll get the Pride Winds coordinates dialed in and launch the missile at it. If that doesn't send a powerful message to them, nothing will. We should be able to take the Vertebrate to watch the destruction. Let me know when you're ready to go. Absolutely. I'm ready to go. Let's finish this. Missile's en route. Splash due in a couple of seconds. This moment's going to go down in history, you know? This is the moment everything changes. Look down she at goes. That. Good riddance. I'll stay here for a while. We can talk about what's next back on the oil rig. Ma'am. Let's talk at the oil rig, Major. In 
Institute's known for replacing people with their sins. Hope that doesn't happen to me. Good work getting the Harper back. It's full of supplies. The Army Depot's a gold mine. It's really bolstered our equipment. Major, thank you. The Brotherhood of Steel would have been a constant thorn in our side. And now we can rest easy, thanks to you. So, we've won? <laughs> There's still a way to go, I'm afraid. Ma'am. Major. Thank you. The Brotherhood of Steel would have been a constant thorn in our side. And now we can rest easy. Thanks to you. We took out the Prudwin. But what about the rest of the Brotherhood that wasn't on the airship? There'll be a few, yes. That said, they've been dealt a serious blow and I don't think they'll be a credible threat for the foreseeable future. We're well on our way to establishing ourselves in the Commonwealth. And this show of power was an important step. The people of the Commonwealth now know what happens if they resist our rule, which we'll start to enforce soon. Of course, first we need to consolidate. We can't risk overextending ourselves. Uh, excuse me, ma'am? Yes, what is it? Apologies for the interruption, but we have a situation at the police station. What sort of situation? The Institute is here, and they want to talk to you. The Institute? What do they want? I don't know. They're refusing to talk to anyone but you. I don't like this. But all right, I'll be there soon. If you'd like to join me, Major, I'm not quite sure where this will go. Thanks for coming. Ma'am. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Something doesn't sit right with me. Ma'am. Thanks for coming. I've got to say, I wasn't expecting the Institute to reach out. What did you want to discuss? Colonel Weidel, is it? First of all, I wanted to express my gratitude for agreeing to meet me at such short notice. Let's be honest, you didn't come here for pleasantries. What do you want? Uh, quite astute. Yes, you're right. I'm Dr. Armstrong. One of the division heads. I come to you with a proposition. What kind of proposition? You see, there's been many disagreements in the boardroom about the focus of our work. What comes next? Many of us simply don't see eye to eye. All the while we keep wasting resources on frivolous projects. Now, I see myself as a proud patriot. If you were to help me remove the other division heads, I could allow you full access to our resources, our labs, our research, all of it. You'd turn your back on the other division heads, just like that? You're right to be skeptical. I cannot stand idly by and watch all our technological achievements be thrown away on glorified vanity projects. Few others see things as I do, so I must take matters into my own hands. <laughs> I've got to admit, I wasn't expecting that. Can we have a moment, please? <laughs> Certainly. Over here, Major. Ma'am. You know, his offer is tempting. The oil rig is well equipped already, but having the Institute bolster our scientific staff would be invaluable, don't you think? 
It also gives us a way out of our current conflict with the Institute with minimal casualties. You can't trust everyone. I'm not blind. Dr. Armstrong clearly has a loose definition of loyalty. But I'm sure we can keep tabs on him if we were to join forces. As long as it doesn't involve petroleum jelly and rubber gloves, I'm ready. <sighs> I'm sure we can avoid that. I've had enough of fighting. Let's have some peace for a change. Yes. And after what happened at the Army Depot, I think we should try to avoid more conflict until we recover. What next? I think we'd make them divert focus away from their synths, and instead look to improve food and water production. We have limited hydroponics facilities on the oil rig, and they could stand for improvement. I'm sure the troops would appreciate better rations. I guess it's worth the risk. Let's do this. Exactly what I'm thinking. Talking this through with you, I do think it's in our best interests to work with Dr. Armstrong. We hold all the cards anyway. Let's go back outside and talk to him about the next steps. Hello again, Colonel. Well, what do you say? We'll do it. I think this plan could work well for all of us. I'll assign the Major here to help carry out your plan. Marvelous. I'm glad you see things my way. I'll return to the Institute and make the necessary preparations. You'll hear from me in three days. Three days? I need to make sure I have a way to smuggle your agent in, without raising any eyebrows. Leave it with me. All right. I look forward to working with you, Doctor. Likewise, Colonel. Ma'am. I'm cautiously optimistic about this. Let's rendezvous here in three days, and we'll see if we can kick off the plan. Talk to Dr. Armstrong for your orders. Excuse me, Doctor? Ah, good. Let's get right into it. I've acquired a set of Gen 2 synth armor with a teleporter relay chip embedded within. When you equip it, I'll be able to bring you along with me to the Institute. The armor itself should be enough to obscure your identity, so long as you keep your distance from everyone. And don't speak to anyone. What next? Once we're inside, we go our separate ways. I cannot be seen with you. Inside each of the division head's offices are fuse boxes. I will provide you with pulse charges to place within them. After each charge has been affixed, you must make your way back to the elevator and go to the teleporter room. I will remotely activate the relay and return you here. Once I see each division head in their office, I will detonate the charges. The fuse boxes will arc and release bolts of electricity that will eliminate everyone in each office. Any questions? That's everything. Then we're ready to begin. Put on the synth uniform and let me know when you're ready to relay into the Institute. Ma'am, I'll let you know if I need you. Are you ready? Let's do this. Excellent. It will take a few days before I can come to power. Once your agent returns, I ask for patience. If they are successful, I will return and invite you into the Institute as our guardians. Remember, keep the uniform on. Avoid contact. Plant the charges and get out. I have some noisemakers for you, Major. You might need to draw people away from certain places. Good luck, Major. You can do this. Go, and stay well away from me. Leave the 
destiny. Major, how did it go? Yeah, it wasn't easy. I knew I could count on you, Major. You delivered once again. Everything now rests in Dr. Armstrong's hands. I'm not sure how long we'll have to wait. I'll let you know when I have news. Dismissed, Major. There's the occasional raider attack, but it doesn't take long to vaporize them. Welcome. Colonel Whitehead is expecting you in the board. <clears throat> Nothing to report, ma'am. The facility is amazing, Doctor. I look forward to working with you. And I you, Colonel. Welcome to the Institute, Major. I take it the teleporter worked just fine? We've got unrestricted access to the Institute, and I've garrisoned a few troops to help Dr. Armstrong keep order. What's the plan? Our scientists are looking over the Institute's current work and seeing what could be most helpful to us in the first instance. After that, the Institute will continue as a semi-autonomous extension of the oil rig's lab facilities. We'll also take advantage of their hydroponics facilities to help bolster our rations. Are synths still a threat? Shouldn't be. Not to us, at least. We'll keep the synth program going for the foreseeable future. If anything, they could help bolster our troops. That's promising. I agree. Feel free to have a look around the place. I asked Dr. Armstrong to prepare a room for you, should you need it. I need to wrap up a couple of things here. Let's talk back at base. Hi. I'm much too busy to talk. Remember to practice good sanitation habits at all times. Quartermaster Barrett's got the best gear in the Commonwealth. Well? As you all know, we've faced many hurdles over the years. Many of us have lost our homes. This oil rig, Raven Rock, so many other bases. We've had to endure loss time and time again. Now, we take fate firmly in our hands, ready to embrace a new future. We've been able to restore the oil rig to full operational capacity. The Army Depot has been fortified, and is now a training ground for promising new recruits. North Boston Police Department is ours, and has been supporting our operations in the city. The people of the Commonwealth will have no choice but to see us as the de facto power in the region. We must stay vigilant, and remember that there are still threats out there that will resist our rule. Raiders. Mutants and even the Brotherhood of Steel. 
But we can take comfort in the fact that we've dealt them a significant blow with the loss of their airship and the death of Elder Maxon. And we can also take comfort in the fact that we have the resources of the Institute at our disposal. After so long, we have finally made real progress. We've succeeded where others have failed. We're the strongest detachment of Enclave forces, and we'll only grow stronger! We'll drive out lawlessness. We'll drive out hostile mutants. And we'll eliminate those who stand against us. The future belongs to the Enclave! I never liked giving speeches. Well, it's something. <laughs> Thanks for that. Now, I don't think I've got any more missions for you. As far as I'm concerned, now's the time for consolidation. And a well-earned rest for you. Is that a problem? I won't lie. I'm not sure what to expect from High Command. That said, they've been cagey about their status ever since we re-established contact. They might strongly disagree with me not releasing the FEV, but I don't think they're in a position to do anything about it. It was good working with you. Same to you. Don't forget to check in with the others from time to time. They may have some things you could help with. Before I forget, take these. Prototype FEV grenades courtesy of Myers and Dr. Kane. Should pack one hell of a punch against mutants. Barrett should have some in stock if you need any more. You should also go find Lieutenant Fitzpatrick. He's, uh, he's got something prepared for you. Until next time, dismissed, Major. Ma'am. I'm glad you made it to the Institute and back in one piece. Looks like Myers pulled through again. How are things going? Thanks to you, things couldn't be better. We all owe you for what you've done for us, Major. What's your story? Like many, I was born into the Enclave. I carried out my training over at Raven Rock in DC, and then transferred here shortly before it was destroyed. General Douglas spent most of his time overseeing the lab's work, so I handled the operation of our field troops in the Commonwealth. Losing Ravenrock hit us hard. We were isolated. And when we had to evacuate the oil rig, most of us went into hiding. I had to watch so many die due to exposure out there. I couldn't take it. That's why I came back here. <laughs> and ran into you. Anything I can do to help out? <laughs> haven't you done enough? I haven't got any more orders for you, Major. Others might, though. Never mind. All right. Speak later. <laughs>